Okay, uh, good morning. It's uh, September 18, 2023. The time is uh, 2.34 a.m. Okay, my, my next topic on my session will be college algebra and uh, we are now on lesson number 65. We, we are running smooth on college algebra and we are almost done. Okay, let's proceed. Uh, the topic is uh, college algebra. Lesson number 65, and the title of the topic is uh, Example Problems of Inverse Functions, meaning we are to solve problems that involves uh, taking the inverse function. Okay, uh, let's uh, try to bring out uh, example number one. The last time around, I have given you already the first example, but uh, I will be adding more for us to have more practice on the evaluation of the so-called uh, taking the inverse function of a given function. Okay, let's proceed. Example number one for uh, this morning will be find the inverse function of the given function is uh, f of x is equal to a cosine of x. Uh, this was the one I am discussing last night. It's just a simple problem, but the important thing here is actually the concept on how to get the inverse function, okay? Uh, let's proceed with the solution. Step number one. Uh, replace uh, f of x by a variable y. Okay? Uh, you can take any variable you want, right? But uh, for this illustration, I will be representing f of x by simply y. So going back to the original equation, we replace this by y, so this will be y. The left hand side will be y. The right hand side uh, will still be the right hand side, it is cosine of x. Step number two, interchange x and y. Okay, meaning for every x, replace it by y, and for every y, replace it by x. Uh, <coughs> Okay, it's like this. Y is a cosine of x, right? Step number two is interchange. So this is y, so this will become x. And this is x, so this will now become y. Right? That's step number two. We interchange it. Right? Uh, it's not an algebraic equation. Uh, and luckily, it was a trigonometric, so there's no problem with it. Like what I said, in, uh, interchange x and y, for every x, replace it by y, and for every y, replace it by x. So x now, okay, we replace this y by x, and uh, this x here by y. So what comes out will be x equal to a cosine of y. Right? Step number three, solve for y. We are to solve for the value of this. Okay? To solve for the value of y, we got a problem, right? Uh, there's a guard <laughs> beside it. It got a cosine function over here. It got a guard, right? Like uh, you're taking... Uh, oh, this is just in the movie, right? If you try to take that person, but that person got a guard, you got a problem, right? So to get that person or to get that person, eliminate the guard. So we must have to eliminate this cosine here for us to solve for y. And to eliminate this cosine here, okay, uh, we got a weapon for that one. Uh, it's just like a storytelling, guys. Uh, we had a remedy for that one. It should be the proper term is remedy. Solve for y. So to eliminate this cosine here, okay, it's like this. If th there is a cosine here, actually the power of 1, the enemy of this one should be a cosine, but with the power negative 1. Right? Uh, this, cosine, uh, this cosine is just uh, uh, cosine to the first power, but if the exponent is just plain 1, uh, we just write it as simply cosine, right? But in reality, this is actually plus 1. Okay? So, the remedy for this to become eliminated 
Okay, we, we will put beside it a cosine with an exponent negative 1. Right? So what do we do? Well, we put cosine to the minus 1 of the left side and cosine to the minus 1 of the right hand side. So it's like this. Cosine to the minus 1 of x should be equal to cosine to the minus 1 of the given right hand side. In which the right hand side, if I will try to place the exponent of this cosine here, it is actually plus 1. Right? For the left hand side, uh, as it is, it should still be cosine to the minus 1 of x. But for the right hand side, okay, uh, something happened. Something happened. What happened? <laughs> uh, there's a cosine to the minus 1 here. If you multiply it by cosine to the plus 1, so actually this should now be equal to cosine minus 1 plus 1 is actually 0, right? And what is the cosine of 0? Cosine raised to the 0 power. Uh, anything raised to the 0 power is actually equal to 1, right? So, upon placing cosine to the minus 1 on the right hand side, and we try to expand, okay? This one become 1. Okay, the product of this become 1, it, it's actually 1. So this is 1 times y will still be y, right? So rearranging now, I will put y now on the left. So y now, uh, you now know why what comes out is only y because uh, if we try to multiply cosine to the minus 1 times cosine to the plus 1, it, it will just be simply equal to 1, right? So 1 times y is uh, just y, so we place it as just y. Okay, and the left hand side, we put it on the right. It will be cosine to the minus 1 of x. Right? Step 4. Replace y. Replace y. The computed value of y. By the value f to the negative 1 of x. And f to the negative 1 of x is actually the inverse function of the given problem. This is the one we are looking for, right? Right? So, re we replace y by this, so it will now become, the left hand side will now be f to the negative 1 of x, and this should be equal to, what's the value of the right hand side? Cosine to the negative 1 of x. And that is actually our answer. <laughs> right? But if you try to read this one, f to the negative 1 and cosine to the negative 1, it, this is actually the inverse function of x. This is to be read inverse function of x. But if you try to just read it exponentially, it should be f to the negative 1 of x. The meaning of that, it is the inverse function of x. And the answer is actually cosine to the negative 1 of x. That will be our answer. Right? So how could we verify if this answer is correct? Or uh, the concept from lesson number 65, right? That if we try to place this value here on the given original function, okay? Then try to simplify. What will come out is supposed to, to be only x. If what comes out is x, okay? The computed or the, the, the derived uh, inverse function is actually correct. Okay, let's try to verify it. Uh, we'll start with f, right? For every x, replace that value by the computed value. By the computed value f to the negative 1 of x. Am I still on camera? Right? The computed value of this is actually this, right? So, function of uh, what's the given function? It's cosine, right? Cosine. Uh, we will just replace the new value now. Instead of x, it should be the computed uh, inverse function. It is cosine to the minus 1 of x, right? And let's try to check if what comes out will be x. If it is x, we are correct, right? So, 
f of x now a of the f of f pro, f to the negative one of x should be equal to I'm following this cosine. Uh, we will rep replace this x here by the value cosine to the minus one of x. It should be cosine to the minus one of x. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what what will be next? Cosine is actually just cosine to the plus one, right? So if we try to multiply this one, it's the same as this one, right? Uh, this will become one, right? So the cosine of the arc cosine of x is this just simply x. What comes out is x. It is this, okay? So meaning to say, if we try to substitute the computed inverse function. And what comes out is still x, okay? Our answer is actually correct. Therefore, therefore, we make a conclusion here. f of x, which has a value cosine of x, its inverse function is actually f to the negative 1 of x. It's actually cosine to the negative 1 of x. Okay? Uh, this is the inverse of that cosine. Uh, as simple as that one, guys. Okay? Uh, I'm not uh, making a magic, right? Okay, example number two for this morning. Uh, I will just give you an example problem that is uh, sim simple to understand, right? Uh, I could give you a complicated one, but uh, since we are just studying concept, if you know the concept on the simpler one for the complicated one, it's the same. It's just a, an algebraic manipulation that will be the difference. Okay, example number two for this morning. Find the inverse function of the given function is uh, g of x is equal to 1 over x minus 2. Okay? Uh, the problem is asking for uh, g to the negative 1 of x. Okay? The inverse function of x. Right? Uh, g to the negative 1, this is read to us the inverse function of x. Okay? Step 1. Uh, replace g of x by y. Uh, again, y. Uh, you could take any variable you want, but uh, for this illustration, I, I replace g of x by y. Okay, so g of x, I will replace that by y, so y now will be equal to 1 over x minus 2. Right, for the right hand side, as it is. Am I still on camera? Uh, step number 2, interchange x and y. This is y, so it will become x, and this is x. It will now become y, right? Uh, this two here, uh, we don't touch it. It's just a pure constant. This one here is a pure constant. We don't touch it. Well, we just replace uh, y for x and x for y. So step number two, x now will be equal to 1 over y minus 2. Step number three, solve for y. Okay, uh, it's all algebraic manipulation. x times y minus 2. Uh, x is actually x over y, right? So try to cross multiply. So x multiplied by y minus 2 equal to uh, 1 times 1 is just 1, right? We are to compute for y, right? So to compute for y, we must have to eliminate x. We divide both sides by x, right? So this cancels. What remains will be y minus 2 is equal to 1 over x. We are to solve for y. Uh, we place the one we are computing on the left. So y now will be equal to uh, 1 over x. We put this on the right. This is plus 2. Right? So the value of y in terms of x, okay? Just pure y. It's a simply linear equation. y equal to 1 over x plus 2. It is this. Right? Then step number four, uh, we'll make another representation. We replace y by the, the value g to the minus one of x. Because uh, this is actually our answer already. Right? This is the answer already. Uh, we replace y by g to the minus one of x, the one we are looking for, the inverse function of g of x. So 
y now, which is equal to g to the minus 1 of x, this is g to the minus 1 of x, is equal to the right-hand side, the one we computed, 1 over x plus 2. So this is actually our answer. The inverse function of g of x, which is 1 over x minus 2, it is actually 1 over x plus 2. Uh, let's try to check if this answer is correct. Okay? So we'll go back to this. For every x, we will replace it by the value 1 over x plus 2. So this will now become g. The new value of x will be the computed value of the inverse function, g prime of x. Uh, sorry, for this one, this should be g to the minus 1. The inverse function. Okay? So while following this, I will replace this value here by the computed value 1 over x plus 2. And then try to simplify. If what comes out is x, according to our concept, our solution is correct. So this should be equal to 1 uh, x, we replace it by 1 over x plus 2 minus 2, right? Uh, this 2 here, cancel with this. So what remains will be 1, of the bottom portion it is 1 over x, right? So this is multiplied by x, multiplied by x, right? x cancels, 1 times x is x, and 1 times 1 will be 1, or x over 1 will be equal to x. So after simplification, after the substitution and simplification, what comes out will be simply x. And according to our concept, if after the substitution of the inverse function, what comes out is simply x, the solution is correct. So this is correct. Okay, uh, that's it, guys. Oh, uh, It's easy to compute uh, inverse functions as long as you know the four procedures, right? Procedure number one, replace it, interchange, solve for the value of y, then replace y by the designation g to the minus 1 or f to the minus 1. It depends on what type of function it is. Then try to verify. If after substitution and simplification what comes out is x, the solution is correct. Okay, good morning from Los Angeles. This is Professor David J. De Luzria.